Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome. We have various type of convergence curve. The one that is probably the most widely used is a uh, curve between uh, the number of iteration and the best fitness function value. So, how do we plot it? Let us say at the beginning my population was P0, right? These were the solution, this value of decision variable x1 and x2, right? And these are their corresponding uh, fitness function value or objective function value. So, what we can do is we can uh, make a plot the x axis iteration and the y axis is the best fitness function value right so among these three solutions if we see 208 is the best solution so i am going to plot that particular value alone i am not going to plot 277 or 307, uh, 397 only the best particular best value in the fitness function is plotted right. so then subsequent to this we perform the teacher phase the learner phase and at the end of iteration 1 let us say this is our population and these are their corresponding fitness function value right so in this at the end of iteration 1 the least value is 116 in this right so i retain the first point because it corresponds to my iteration 0 and in at the end of iteration 1 i had 116 so we have plotted that 116 and we continue doing so so at the end of iteration 2 let us say this is the fitness function value the best value here is 68 so we plot that 68 over here and then we keep doing it and say at the end of iteration 10 we have this fitness function value right 0 0 1 in this the least one is 0 it does not matter whether you take this 0 or this 0 right you are not plotting the solutions we are plotting only the fitness function value right so this will look like something like this so this is called as the convergence curve so this curve shows you that as iterations progress uh, how much improvement we were able to do in the objective function value in this case it seems to have converged to the global optima right so there are uh, there is not much change uh, or at least visible change in those three values so this curve tells us the performance of the algorithm as iteration proceeds how we are improving in terms of the best solution that we have so if you think about it in tlbo we never uh, eliminate a solution until we have found a better solution than that right so even in teacher phase and learner phase whenever a solution was to be included in the population it had to meet the criteria that it is better than the solution which was used to generate the new solution right so that way uh, if you see our this curve will always be monotonically decreasing for a minimization problem it will be monotonically decreasing right because we are never losing out on a good solution in favor of a bad solution so over a period of iteration we may not be improving from one iteration to other iteration the fitness function is definitely not going to deteriorate right so that is called as monotonic convergence and tlbo exhibits this monotonic convergence these are three different cases of uh, convergence curve right so in all the three cases the x axis is the iterations right so and the y axis is best fitness function value obtained at that particular iteration right so here uh, as we just discussed for iteration 5 the best value obtained is this this point so in the first case if we see right the values have more or less stabilized right so for a large number of iteration there does not seem to be significant change right however if you see in the second plot this plot over here if you see it is continuously decreasing it has uh, not stabilized so if you come across this situation that means that if you perform few more iterations there is a likelihood again remember there is no guarantee there is a likelihood that you will get a better solution right so here we don't say that the algorithm has converged right so as you see it is still trying to improve the fitness function value right so these two cases are pretty much clear right so but you can also end up in cases like this right wherein if you see over here for a substantial number of iteration there is there is no improvement in the fitness function value 
right no observable it, uh, improvement in fitness function value but afterwards it starts decreasing so it is not correct to fix, fix the number of iterations and take whatever the solution we get at the end of the iterations it is necessary that we have a look at the convergence plot and decide whether the algorithm has converged or not so there is another type of convergence curve which is plotted between the number of fitness function evaluation and the best fitness function value right let us say uh, in this case the x axis is not going to be iteration the x axis is going to be the number of functional evaluation so what we are trying to plot is every time i evaluate the function what is its objective function value that's what we are going to plot let us say uh, my initial population was phi right so initially i would have evaluated the objective function phi times right remember this is not iteration it is number of functional evaluation so the first time when i evaluated uh, the fitness function value let us say it is 8 the second for the second member it was 12 for the third member it was 9 for the fourth member it was 5 for the next member it was 11 and uh, this was the initial population right so now let us say solution 1 underwent teacher phase and we got a new solution which had a, a fitness function value of 4 right so when i evaluate that fitness function value i make note of this entry that when i evaluated the fitness function for the sixth time we had obtained a value of 4 right uh, similarly when it underwent student phase and it generated a new solution the fitness function was evaluated for this uh, solu new solution let's say the fitness function is 6 so when i evaluated the fitness function for the seventh time right the first five are the initial population size right so you evaluate that even before you begin the algorithm right the sixth one was because the first member underwent teacher phase so you got a new solution so we had to evaluate uh, the fitness function uh, similarly the first solution underwent learner phase we generated a new solution we had to evaluate the fitness function of the new solution similarly uh, every time we evaluate the fitness function right uh, let us say we make a note of these values right? now if we plot this uh, it looks something like this right it's scattered uh, we can't uh, make much out of it if we keep doing iterations obviously the it is going to exhibit a um, downward trend uh, uh, in a whole but the inference is not that clear because you are plotting every functional evaluation so for example let us say you have generated a solution which is actually uh, inferior right so since you evaluate the fitness function of that particular solution you also will end up plotting it if we are going to plot between functional evaluation and fitness value right so what we do is uh, we plot the best fitness value so what we are saying is when i evaluated the fitness function for the first time right i got 8 what is the best value so far so that would be 8 when I evaluated the fitness function for the second time but what is the fitness function value that I have so far best fitness function value so this remains 8 right so let us say for the third time I, when we evaluate the fitness function let us say it turns out to be 9 right but what is the fitness function value best fitness function value that I have so it is between these three right so the between these three is still it is 8 right so uh, let us say fourth time I get a solution which has a fitness function value of 5 right in this case i need to compare 8 and 5 which is better 5 is better so this 8 becomes 5 then let's say fifth time you get a objective function value of 11 so 5 is retained right so sixth time let us say we get a solution 4 so the best we have so far is 5 but now we have received 4 right so we will the best fitness function value so far obtained is 4 right so we keep doing this right so since this since we encounter a 1 over here this becomes 1 and below this there is no value less than 1 so it remains at 1 right so instead of plotting this column versus this column what we are going to do is we are going to plot this column versus this column right um, so that plot would look something like this so this is fitness functional evaluations right uh, when i evaluated the fitness function for the first time what was the best fitness function value right this best fitness is uh, important this is not fitness value but best fitness uh, function value right so now if you see this this plot will be monotonically converging right so even if i so for example let's say here the best solution was 4 but i encountered a solution uh, with an objective function value of 6 so i don't consider that uh, because it is poorer than the best that i have so far right so the convergence curve can either be between iteration 
and the best fitness function value of the population right or the convergence curve can be between functional evaluation and best fitness function. So, if you observe you would have seen that uh, in multiple places we had employed random numbers right our initial step itself was to generate a random population. So, if two people are working on the same problem with the same algorithm they might start with a different uh, set of random numbers right and it is perfectly possible that both of them end up with a different result right. So, since these are stochastic techniques what is to be done is the algorithm on the same problem has to be run multiple times. If you run it multiple times you are expecting that uh, the stochasticity which is involved uh, will be taken care of and you will be probably towards uh, you will be reaching the uh, optimal solution right. So, what is done is uh, this curve is between iteration and best fitness function value right which we had first seen right. So, for every fit uh, for every iteration uh, what is the fitness function value best fitness function value in the population. So, that is what is being plotted iteration versus best fitness function value of the population in that particular iteration right. So, there would be 15 convergence curve right. So, if you remember the convergence curve this plot is very straightforward for one run I have one convergence curve right. So, for 15 runs we will have 15 such curves right. So, this shows 15 curves right. So, each color uh, indicates one run. So, if you observe that in this 15 runs in one of the runs the initial population itself had a very good solution right because you chose it randomly it so happened that one of the random solutions which you generated is actually closer to the uh, 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 optima right. Whereas, in one of the runs the solution the best solution of the initial random population itself was uh, you can say very bad because it was about about 350 right. So, for this particular run the algorithm did not have to do much right for the one wherein you had the initial population itself which was closer to the optima the algorithm did not have to much right. Whereas, for this particular run the algorithm had to bring it down right from some 350 plus all the way up to 0 right. So, this shows a consolidated plot of all the runs right. So, uh, in this case it happens that all, all the runs have probably converged to the same or uh, almost uh, equal values right, but it is not necessary not necessary uh, we may end up with curves like this wherein let us say uh, the first run is like this whereas, the second run is like this right. Uh, I mean you, you complete the number of uh, iterations. So, this is iterations this is again uh, your best uh, fitness function value right. So, it can it is perfectly possible that this can happen. Right. So, how do we statistically analyze this uh, figure is that uh, we generate a, sta a statistical table right. So, let us say I had this 15 runs. So, that is what is in this column all the 15 runs and in each of the run uh, we find out what is the best solution that was obtained right after the completion of the required number of iterations right. So, let us say run 1 I had to do 10 iterations I completed 10 iterations and at the end of 10 iterations I have a population the best value in the population right that is what we used to use for plotting the convergence. So, the that best value is taken over here right same thing for run 2, run 3 and so on. So, for example, here if you see uh, for run 11 uh, the algorithm had converged to a value of 4 whereas, the optimal solution is uh, 0 right. So, this can uh, happen right. So, now we have this vector. So, we can generate the statistical table right. So, this is the best value. So, in best value what we do is we report the minimum value among this since we are talking about a minimum minimization problem. So, the best value in this is or the minimum value in this is 0 right. So, that is what is done right. What is the worst value right. So, worst value if I see the maximum value right. So, maximum value was 4 right and the mean value is the mean of this all these numbers all these numbers uh, in the second column the mean of that is 0 0.533 median is 0 and the standard deviation is 1.06. So, now this table tells us uh, how uh, robust is the algorithm. So, if I do multiple runs this statistical table shows me the performance of the algorithm across the run. If the standard deviation is less that means the algorithm is consistently converging it to the same solution right. Um, so, this is how a statistical table is generated for an algorithm. So, so far we have seen how to plot uh, the results that we get. Let us 
see what would happen if I want to compare two algorithms, right? So, if I wanted to compare two algorithms, both algorithms obviously I will have to run 15, 15 times. So, this graph is going to have 30 curves, 30 convergence curves and it is going to be a little bit difficult to interpret things out of that. So, what we will next the mean convergence curve, right? So, for mean convergence curve uh, is plotted between the functional evaluation, right? The number of functional evaluation and the mean of best fitness function value. Let us see how it is to be calculated, right? So, let us assume that I uh, ran the algorithm first time, right? When I executed it first time, uh, these are the objective function values that I obtained, right? I evaluated the objective function for 16 times. So, the value obtained against each evaluation is reported here, right? And we have seen how to find out the best fitness function value till the current functional evaluation, right? So, this is the second column indicates that, right? So, first time when I evaluated 8, so I have nothing to compare, so I will take it as 8. Second time I had obtained 12, right? So, but 8 is better than 12, so the best fitness function value obtained till this functional evaluation is still 8, right? Third time I obtained the functional value to be 9, but still the one that I obtained previously is better, so I retain 8. So, we have basically seen how to do this, uh, how to get this best value column, right? So, this I can do for the second run, right? For first run, I have this column. For the second run, I can generate this column, right? For the second run, when I did the first functional evaluation, I obtained a value of 12, right? So, since again, I do not have anything to compare with, I take 12 as the best value. For the second functional evaluation, I get a value of 8. So, since 8 is better than 12, we get 8. Third functional evaluation, I get a function value of five, 9, but still since 8 is better, I will retain 8 and so on and so forth, right? So, I can do this for run 2 as well as run 3 and run 4, right? So, now we have this thing. So, what we will do is we will find out the mean of the best value will give us 14, right? So, this is the average of the best fitness function value at functional evaluation 1. So, let us see for this, it will be this 4 plus 5 plus this 5 plus this 5, right? The average of these 4 numbers would turn out to be 4.75. So, what we are saying is, when I perform the 7th functional evaluation across all the runs, the mean of the best value is 4.75. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to plot this uh, functional value and this mean of the best functional value, right? So, we will get a curve like as shown in the figure. So, this completes the mean convergence curve. So, since we have discussed few convergence curve, let us just try to consolidate it. The first one that we studied was plotting iteration versus best fitness function value. At the end of every iteration, the best value in the population is plotted, right? So, this is the convergence curve. When I do for multiple runs, this uh, plot, the first plot will have multiple curves. That is what is shown over here, iteration and best fitness function value. Uh, since uh, we took 15 runs, there are 15 such curves, right? So, these two are done, right? In both of this, the x axis was iteration and the y axis was best fitness function value, right? The third plot which we saw was number of functional evaluation. So, here what we did was that if we are evaluating the objective function for the seventh time, right? At the end of seventh time, you are, you are plotting what is the best value you have obtained so far? That is what we are doing in this uh, best fitness function value. So, till this particular evaluation, so if till this particular functional evaluation, what is the best solution you have got so far? So, that is what we are plotting over here, right? So, uh, in this case, so for the till the fourth functional evaluation, the best solution that was obtained was phi. That is what uh, this the third plot shows. And this final plot is to show the mean. This plot is for one run, right? And this plot is also for one run, right? Uh, so, if I have multiple runs, I will have multiple such curves, right? So, the average of that curve is nothing but uh, this, this curve. So, this takes care of multiple runs, right? So, now if I have multiple algorithms, right, I can plot uh, multiple such curves and try to make some inferences from, from that plot because this particular curve consolidates uh, the information of all the runs for us, right? So, I do not need to worry about runs because that information has been captured because of this mean of best fitness function value, right? So, these are the four types of uh, convergence curves 
right? Uh, we'll come back to it uh, in the next lecture also, right? So over next two or three lectures, uh, you will become comfortable with the plotting of this curve and the use of this curve, right? So let us now discuss how will we compare algorithms, right? Assume this is the statistical table of a particular algorithm. So we have seen a uh, few minutes back as to how to generate this statistical uh, this statistical table, right? So that time we have generated for only one problem. So the same concept if I am trying to solve five problems, let us say I have five problems, function 1, function 2, function 3, function 4, function 5, I will get one row for each problem. So that is what we have discussed uh, previously. Right? So, we know how to get this table. Given 5 problems, the algorithm has to be run multiple times on each of the problem and then you consolidate your results to get this statistical table. Right? So, let us say I perform the same activity with another algorithm and I get a table like this. So, now we have 2 algorithms which were executed on 5 functions, same functions for a specified number of runs. Right. So, now we have two statistical table. So, with this statistical table, we would want to say which algorithm is better. In view of the nature of this course, what we will be doing uh, is a very preliminary uh, comparison. Right. There are advanced techniques to compare uh, these two tables. To begin with, let us just take the best value. Right. So, for function 1, algorithm 1 as well as algorithm 2 gave the same best value. Right. So, uh, for the second function, same value. For the fourth function, it is the same value. Right. For the third function, algorithm 1 was able to determine a better optimal solution than algorithm 2 because here I have 60 from algorithm 1 for function 3. Here for algorithm 2 function 3, the best value it was able to find out is 136. Right. So, this is an inferior value whereas this is a better value. Right. Same thing for uh, function 5 if we see. Right. So, 235 is better than 254. Right. So, I can make this conclusion, right? So that is just the statistic, right? So algorithm one, algorithm two. Uh, so what we are saying is, how many times algorithm one was better than algorithm two with respect to the best statistics, right? So here in two cases, in two of the five problems, algorithm one was clearly better than algorithm two, right? And algorithm two is not better than algorithm one in any of the cases. So we have this value of zero, right? So, and in 3 cases, both of them gave, gave us identical results. So, that is what we have this striked off 26, 18, uh, 46. So, in 3 cases, it gave us identical results. Right. So, similarly, we can do for worst, right. So, worst means uh, between 30 and 58, 30 is actually a good solution, right. So, this is doing good over here, 21 is same. So, let me just cross it, 137 is better than 141. Right. So, this is, we let me put a tick mark over here, uh, 51 is actually bad, right, 50 is better. So, let me put a tick mark over here and 250 is better, 263 is bad, right. So, with respect to the worst, in 3 cases, case 1, case 2 and case 3, in 3 cases, algorithm 1 was better than algorithm 2 with respect to the worst. And in one case, they had identical value because here also we have for function 2, we have a value of 21 as well as in uh, function 2 for algorithm 2 also, we had a value of 21. So, now we can also do the same thing for with respect to mean, right. So, for all the 5 problems, uh, the mean is better for algorithm 1. So, 27.2, 43.4, 18.12, 20.6, 120.6, 8, 139. 47.24, 48.4, 239.24 is better than 259, right. So, in all the 5 cases, algorithm 1 is better than algorithm 2 with respect to mean, right. Similarly, you can do it for median, right. So, median also if you see 28 is better than 57, 18 is better than 21, 131 is better than 139, 47 is better than 48 and 238 is better than 259. So, in all these 5 cases, uh, algorithm 1 outperformed algorithm 2, right. So, this table tells how algorithm 1 is better than algorithm 2 from the first column, right. The second column says that how in how many of the cases was algorithm 2 better than algorithm 1, right. And the third column says in how many cases they gave identical results, right. So, similarly, we can do it with respect to the standard deviation, right. So, standard deviation if we see for these two first problems, 
uh, algorithm 1 has a lower standard deviation whereas for these three problems algorithm 2 has a better standard deviation right. So, the sum of all these rows would turn out to be uh, phi because there are phi problems right. So, this table gives a comparison of both the algorithms right. If you are not really interested in comparing the algorithms but uh, want to know the best fitness function value then we can just uh, for all the function irrespective of from which algorithm is it coming we can find out the best solution. In this case it happens that uh, the best solution uh, can be determined just by algorithm 1 uh, with respect to the best solution right. So, 26 for the first function, 18 for the second, 60 for the third, 46 for the fourth and 235 for the fifth. So, if you are not necessarily interested in comparing algorithms but uh, are only interested in the optimal solution then whichever algorithm gives the better solution for a particular problem that solution is to be taken. With that we will end this session, thank you.